Are there challenges when implementing DevOps in a company that's already utilizing the methodology, but hasn't really kind of defined it or trying to implement it new? Yeah, I'd say the first thing is the silo. Um, DevOps is complicated. It takes somebody who knows a lot about some uh, very deep topics to to accomplish. And I have no, uh, uh, I, I feel for any given DevOps engineer whose life is extremely complicated, extremely deep in a, a broad set of topics. And in general, and I think you'll agree with me if you're one of these, if you're a DevOps engineer, no news is good news. And the only time anybody really cares so much about what you're doing or really appreciates it, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but it's when something's broken. And when it's broken, then you're the center of attention. Uh, if everything's working fine, no matter how much work you put in, it's not necessarily like, hey, glad, so glad John did a great job on the DevOps. We're still up today. And <laughs> that's just not the way it goes. Uh, anyway, um, the, the thing, the ch some of the challenges there are that that guy who's running that, um, building that implementation or running that implementation is that is that one guy. Now that person or or, or woman, if, if that that if that guy or woman is actually uh, has somebody with them working in tandem with them, that's great. But we all know how that is when the knowledge of this piece, who knows where all the the bodies are buried and where's where all those all these these elements live and how well they play together. Well, that's that's tribal knowledge or it's it's siloing or whatever you want to call it but that day will come when someone says i don't want to touch that john built that and and i i it's working and let's not touch it and that's not even a small thing i've talked to and i've i've been a consultant for many years and and i've been in a lot of operations and, and in and out of a lot of different companies in various different situations and that that one element alone i've seen a million times and even I, i've even seen a company who couldn't deploy their software and they were so afraid to change their production um, system because it was delicate, it was fragile. There was a lot of moving parts. Only one person really knew how those moving parts fit together. And so they said, look, I don't wanna to touch it. And, and customers were like, you gotta to touch it. <laughs> We've got this issue and that issue, they gotta go out and they, could, they couldn't release. And so they had, to, they had to hire big and they had to bring consultants in, which is where I, you know, I, I met these guys. Um, it really is, you know, it can become really challenging just knowing that this there's a, an individual that has that deep knowledge and has to be able to transfer it um there's also just like i was saying the the idea that this this beast is many different parts i talked about it where how it's a it's a cycle well any given stage of that cycle whether you're in testing uh or you're in uh development go have a conversation and ask the same questions what is devops to anybody who's on you know specific, focusing on one of those those parts of that cycle they may give you a completely different answer about it because it's so deep there's so much going on there a developer may tell you devops is all about getting my code upstream and managing the versions of my code the branching strategies and all the other stuff that goes along with it there's a whole host of things you can have a conversation about there um so the point is that DevOps is hard because it starts to get bigger and in some companies big enough that no one person actually knows how all of it is strung together. And so if you have then a good enough solution that was just good enough for the way we did business 10 years ago and it's stuck in place and you have siloed knowledge and it's big enough that nobody really understands the whole picture, they understand parts of it and nobody wants to touch the other parts because God, what do we be into if, if we're broke? Um, how are you going to evolve out of that? You know, you, you suddenly it's this it's this thing that snowballed beyond where we can change it, and now we're perpetuating what what basically was a great idea ten years ago. And no matter what it's going to take to manage it and run it, well, that's our business now because it's it's grown that way. Obviously, that's a that's a worst case scenario, but. It's very true, and it happens a lot, and different to varying degrees to different companies. I think uh, most people relate. You know that um, those those things can those those processes are hard to get out of once they get started, and this is definitely one of them. It's broad, it's deep, it's technical, and it's not this little thing sitting on the side of your business that just kind of you know. I mean, I don't like it when the AC goes out, but my life doesn't change that much. You know, it's it, it'll it'll get turned on in a day or. Yeah, it's a little frustrating. I mean, time of year, I live in Florida, so yeah, it can be a problem. But we'll live through it. You know, DevOps goes down. That is the central process. 
you know, whatever, take a part of it. I can't release software. I can't test it or I can't get it out. I can't do a deployment. I got customers that are coming in. We can't respond to them. Whatever part of that, that, that can actually affect your business. That can affect the timelines, affect the budgets. I mean, it affects everything. It's, it's really, um, you don't have to understand about DevOps um, to know that as a company, as any organization, you know, the way that we're going to win is by being good, uh, by putting the right pieces together that fit together, that work together, and that actually function properly. If I'm trying to design a car that's going to win a race, well, I know that I got to have good components and I know that I have to have somebody good who can put those things together. I want all the best uh, pieces to go into that, that thing. When uh, when it's it's not that way, um, you're gonna you're gonna see effect on your company, and and those are those effects are time, cost, and risk, and and we see them. It, and in some cases, it's straight up. I lost a customer because we had an outage. I keep I keep this um, I keep this uh, folder on my drive of screenshots of. 404s and oops, we're down or sorry, we couldn't respond to your request. Try again later. Um, and from notable websites like household family names, you know, that, that you would never think, I mean, they've got a whole team working on all these things. There's no way it would go down and right in the middle of the day on, on a Tuesday. Wow. Did you know such and such is down? It happens all the time. It's, it's a very difficult problem. So uh, how it can, you know, how we can step up beyond that and, and stop talking about the, you know, the, the worst case scenario or the last chapter is, you know, we say, well, um, as a community and as a, as, as a DevOps culture, um, what can we do about that? Well, obviously there's, there's standards I was talking about. There's ways to standardize. And the more we standardize, the more we can hand off to a platform or hand off to a team that dedicates itself to that particular piece, um, better communication. Um, there's, there's a, I mean, this, this, this good discussion can go on and on, but I'll just name a couple here, like where <clears throat> you have an entire team of people that need, need to do all sorts of different things on the, on a, uh, uh, to, in the course of releasing software, if all of the DevOps tools and all of the DevOps products that your company is invested in are all run by that one DevOps guy, he's not, he's, he's not going to be able to scale himself into every single discussion and to help everybody out. The idea that you can provide some autonomy to these people that need to work together on this. It can make a massive difference in the company. And the thing is a lot of people, a lot of the, the market out there right now is dedicated toward the DevOps engineer for all those reasons I mentioned before. He's the only guy that really knows what's going on. Uh, he's the technical guy. He's the guy we trust implementing this stuff. Um, and I don't want anybody else wasting their time with it. Okay, that's great. You know, those are all good reasons, except that you just loaded them up with more and more and more and more and more, and it never stops. And and talk to them. They're over. A lot of those people are overworked. They're under a huge amount of stress, and a lot of them are just not able to handle the the load. And so they can. I mean, they can handle it, but that cost does come out. You know, it comes out in terms of well, I can't respond to you this week. I'll get you next week, or maybe not today. Maybe tomorrow. Or uh, we're we're just not doing that right now. We're going to think about doing that next quarter. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, trying, a lot of um, mitigation that goes on there to try to keep those keep that whole system alive. 